Hello and welcome to Bad Dreams Models and Transport. So, we are having a, we're in a French setting and uh, we're going to have a look and talk about the uh, 140C231 SNCF locomotive. It's a 280 steam engine and in origin the Etat line. 140-101-140-370 class. So we begin now just with a small overview of what's happening. Definitely we see there are some French cars around here on the layout and the engine driver has parked his traction avant. The fireman, his Simca 1000, which is incidentally the car my parents had when I was a, when I was a boy and a teenager and the car I learned to drive on. So the green car there in the in the distance, that's a Simca 1000. And a couple of Renault 4s, one belonging to the fire brigade and one to a private citizen, who are driving past. Wondering how come there's all this rubbish lying around the main square, but <laughs> that's another story. Anyway, let's talk about this locomotive, but first we'll bring it in view. So already couple up, coupled up to two goods wagons. We'll do a lap of the layer of the first. You'll have guessed that we're going to be running a goods train tonight. This evening, it's not really night. There it is. This is a very interesting model. In fact, I think we'll begin talking about the model this time. So. This is a Jouet model, the model of the 140C class, eh? specifically the model of 140C231 was, in, was announced in 1967 and then remained in production throughout the Jouet Champagnol production period. A three pole motor, originally with a three pole motor and uh, gear drive I suppose. I don't know because I don't have one of them. Uh, the one I have is uh, the upgraded version with the five pole motor and the belt drive between the motor and the, and the drive shaft, which allows for very good low speed drive, plenty of torque, and quite a silent running locomotive. It's very quiet. It does tend to have a spot of belt slippage sometime, it's a little bit temperamental, I've changed the belts. You can find silicone belts nowadays, replacement for the rubber ones. It's a 10mm diameter belt, and you can even buy them on eBay, no problem. And uh, on the whole, very good locomotive. It has uh, pick up, picks up electricity from the first three sets of wheels. It has a very good system of uh, wiper pickups. Uh, on the frontmost wheels there are wiper pick pickups also onto the wheel tires. On the flanges, the other wiper pickups instead are behind the flanges. And uh, on the rearmost wheels, which are the wheels with the drive, with the, with the, with the drive gear, there are traction tires. and. I remember on previous video, I'll put it in the description box, the link, I changed the, dry, the traction tires. So now we're running it on brand new traction tires. So it's really very good. Okay, so let's bring it into view. In fact, I think we'll do our coupling up. Or we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the class now. Okay, let's bring it here. Right. Let's have a chat about this class of steam locomotive. So, as you know very well, I particularly like steam engines. I like steam locomotives. I also like electric locomotives, I also like diesels, I also like rail cars, but steam has a special place uh, for me. I am a steam, a steam train enthusiast. So, let's talk about this class. This is a 280 locomotive, uh, or 140, if we use the European Continental System, where we don't count, we don't count the wheels, we count the axles. 
and uh, in origin these locomotives uh, were were uh, uh, were operated by the etat lines meaning the state lines or chemin de fer de l'etat <clears throat> and uh, they were into production immediately before the first world war in this case we're talking about uh, number 231 this locomotive was actually built during the war but we'll get there in a minute so these locomotives had a power output of 900 kilowatts or 1210 horsepower maximum speed of 70 kilometers an hour or 43 miles per hour an attractive effort of 100, between 157.8 and 184.1 kilonewtons. I looked up the Wikipedia page. You can look them up on Wikipedia if you if you want to get more information. They had a, a suitable axle load, relatively light, that allowed them to be operated on all the lines, all the state lines of the ETA network, uh, used both for freight trains and for passenger, even if they were generally used for freight trains. These were generally hauling goods trains. Then uh, uh, their classification, as I said at the beginning, was uh, the original classification was ETA 140-101 to 140-370. Meaning the class 140-140 meaning 280 and then the engine number. The, we can see that tenders had a different number. You can see here, 19C, what does that say? 38, I think. These locomotives are coupled to two types of tender, the smaller capacity one, as we can see here. Here we also see that there's a safety gauge here to make sure you don't, because this was fitted when there was electrification, to make sure you didn't go, it says danger there, higher than this height, you're at risk touching the overhead. And uh, the locomotive is fitted with, uh, should be fitted with warning. No, it isn't. It's not. Anyway, okay. It doesn't have any any hazard signs for, <laughs> and, and protect you against electrocution. Okay, so, they, as we said, uh, these locomotives were built originally before the First World War and, and also during the First World War. And this is one of the locomotives that was built during the First World War specifically in 1916 and this locomotive has as you can see by the title it's actually a French locomotive but built in Scotland because of course the French industry was uh, completely over overloaded with war production it was working full out locomotive factories France had lost materiel and so on they were working for their work effort and so they had to have some lo locomotives also built in in Britain, in the UK. Be, uh, and these locomotives were built uh, by the North British Locomotive Company in Glasgow. So that's why I say it's a Scottish French locomotive, or a French Scottish locomotive. And it was built in Glasgow, and I was also born in Glasgow. So that's why I have, I've, I, I'm really quite fond of this locomotive. Of 231 of, uh, of number 231 of class 140. So this locomotive then uh, the locomotives were also built by uh, the Vulcan foundry. You can find all the all the information on Wikipedia and uh, a series of North British locomotive NBL North British locomotive company locomotives some were even lost at sea off Cornwall when the ship that was transporting them was uh, uh, was torpedoed during the First World War, so some never entered service. I can't remember now how many. Refer to again to Wikipedia. No, there is the, the there is a hazard sign uh, to, to to warn about overhead wires. I hadn't seen it. Okay, so and seventy locomotives of this class, uh, mentioning the First World War, were actually ordered for the ALVF which was the French military rail-mounted heavy artillery. I'm not going to say that in French because uh, I don't speak French. I can understand French and uh, maybe you've heard me. Maybe I have a bit of a funny accent, but I try to, to make as good an ac accent as possible even when I pronounce things in French. But I'm not a French speaker and I didn't learn it, even if I can read it and I can understand it. Anyway, the 70 locomotives were built in Britain, in the UK, for the French rail-mounted heavy artillery, 
and they were built uh, part by the Vulcan Foundry and part by North British Locomotive Factory Company in Glasgow. After the war, the 70 locomotives were sold by the military. They were sold to the ones made by Vulcan Foundry were sold to the Chamon de Fer de Paris à Lyon et à la Méditerranée, meaning the PLM, Paris Lyon Méditerranée. Okay, there I go with French. Tell me if my French is rubbish. Please say so in the comments. Whereas the North British Locomotive Company, Glasgow built locomotives, were sold to the Chemin de Fer de l'Est, meaning the Eastern Lines. And then these, these locomotives received different classes, uh, respectively, when, uh, they were when all the locomotive companies of Fran France were merged into the SNCF, uh, the Société Nationale de Chemin de Fer, the French State Railways, which are still the French rail operator as we speak today. Anyway, the, going back to the, uh, our locomotive, I'm, go I'm turning the page over. The, when these locomotives were event, the nationalization, the complete nationalization, because these belong to Etat lines, which were anyway state-owned lines in this case here, number 231, they, the new classification became 140C and then the engine number 231. It would have been 140C, 230, 282, whatever, no, I don't know if I came to 282, anyway. There were a total of, uh, mentioning these locomotives, a total of, how many were built? I think 300 and, just a minute, total built. Total built in the class, 340. I hadn't written down, that down in my notes, sorry. I had a look at the computer. Of a total built of 340 built, we have eight that have survived into preservation. Anyway, the, this class of locomotive, the 140C locomotive, has the honor of being the very last uh, steam engine in commercial service in France. In fact, uh, a series of these locomotives, where a batch of them were sold, were operated in the end by the CFTA, meaning the CFTA, the Chemin de Fer et Transport Automobile, meaning French railway company dedicated to transporting motor cars. And uh, they were the last day-to-day -day use steam locos on the French rail network. And the outlasting, the, la the official end of steam, of S on a, operated by SNCF, by the National Rail Company, it, which was in 1974, because the 140C locomotives operated by CFTA, CFTA, uh, the last ones ran right into 1975, and the last commercial steam train in France was on the 24th of September 1975. So that's really the end of steam in France. As I said a second ago, eight were preserved, including 140C231 that we see here in model form, um, and by Ajecta, that's the French National um, Steam Rail Railway Association, and it's, it's classified as a national monument. We spoke about the model at the beginning of the video this time, so I think that was quite a comprehensive description of the class and let's hope this phone isn't playing tricks, because I wouldn't like to have repeat, repeat all this stuff again. You never know. Let's couple up to a good strain and uh, let the locomotive speak. Okay, here we are. I see if this temperamental belt-driven model... Nah, usual. It skids a bit. There, right. You have to put it a bit in reverse. And the belt's new, huh? The, be the belt is recent. Okay, let's reverse into the siding and couple up to our goods drain. Let's see if the coupling happened. Ah, come on. It didn't. We're coupling up couplings of different manufacturers. Let's put that in forward gear and let's see what's happened here. I think we're going to have to intervene. Hello, have we managed? Of course, we're coupling up. What we're coupling here is, uh, ah, we have, uh, this is a Hornby ACHO uh, bogey goods wagon, box wagon, which is fitted with one Hornby uh, ACHO coupling and one Jouef. 
this is another Meccano, this is another Hornby ACHO carriage, wagon, sorry, box van, and we're trying to couple up to one of the modified, modified uh, Jouef box vans, one, two, three, four, that we saw in a previous video, in a, in a previous video that were modified by who I call the great French craftsman. So I'm a great a man that trans train enthusiast. I bought quite a few things from this person's collection. He was the grandfather of, uh, of a lady in France that I bought things from off Vinted, who modified toy wagons into model wagons, and we'll see them better in better light. So we have these three, one, two, three, four, with, with modified the couplings, uh, really heavily modified. And then we have uh, a Lima box wagon. Let's say that we have the more French material here at the front. And then we have uh, one, two, three. We have a Lima, Lima box wagon here. Uh, another Lima one, which is a classic Italian box wagon. With, uh, and then uh, an Italian state railways box wagon for painted silver for refrigerated material. Uh, goods uh, uh, made by Kleinbahn. So I've sort of put the Italians on the tail of the train. And at the end we have uh, the uh, Fleischmann uh, luggage van and brake, acting as brake van in this case here. We need a brake van on this train because some of the stock, they don't have continuous brakes. In fact, these locomotive, these carriages, these wagons here have not got brakes. So it definitely has, has to have a brake van. So after this short introduction on the train, let's go. This is quite a heavy train, a combination of plastic wheels, uh, aluminium wheels, metal wheels. So let's see how the locomotive gets on. Oh, and that's an accident. Oops, <laughs> oops. <laughs> right, I think we'll stop here. And we'll do the, the running session in a separate video. Otherwise, uh, we'll end up making it too long. You never know that this uh, this uh, telephone of mine plays us some tricks. Let me, let me fix this up. See you shortly in the next video with the running session. If you like the video, give it a like. Click the notification bell. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Cheerio and see you very, very soon. Oh, what a disaster. Anyway, these are beautiful, beautiful uh, wagons. Change that you can see underneath. Okay, ciao ciao.